Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. This is uh, episode number 210 of the show. I am Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. And this week, I have six new reviews from a combination of myself and a contributor. Uh, I will be reviewing uh, Dungeons and Strata Deepest Dungeon, book number one, uh, Tuscan Blade Exodus Online, book number one, and Outpost 7, a game lit Dungeon Core Adventure, uh, Game Lit Little BD Dungeon Core Adventure, book number two in the Dark Exchange series. Uh, and then we're going to have, of course, some nice books from um, Ian Mitchell and his uh, Picks of the Week. So there we go. Uh, and uh, But before we get into any of that, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Lit RPG news, we're going to start off with a reminder uh, that Fantasy Book Fest in Anaheim, California is happening between April the 17th and the 19th, and tickets are still on sale. Um, there are going to be a number of fantasy authors there, but also a smaller core group of uh, liturgy and Gimlet authors, including myself. Um, also attending is going to be Domino Finn, Apollo Thorne, James A. Hunter, and Ari Mejia, this guy right here doing the podcast. Um, there's also a number of events happening around that 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 location and it's actually really close to Disneyland. So if you're a Disney fan and you kind of want to discount a rate uh, while attending a convention, this is definitely a great shot for you. Um, to attend the Fantasy Book Fest, though, you are going to have to purchase tickets and tickets are going uh, are on sale and they're going fast. Uh, there's actually a whole tiered pricing um, schedule for things. If you're just there for a signing day, it'll be $15. If it's want to attend all the reader events, it's 75 bucks, and $150 to attend the entire event, including panels, educational workshops. Uh, there's also going to be a D&D game night, s'mores and stories event, and of course, a fantasy Ren Fair cosplay signing. So all kinds of fun stuff for you. And of course, we'll have uh, links in the show notes for the Facebook group for this particular event, and also the website that's going to be hosting and where you can buy tickets and everything. Um, in additional news, we have Spectrum Audiobooks, um, run by narrator Annalise Rennie uh, and her group. Um, they asked us to tell the audience and readers and writers that they're expanding into print and ebook publishing. Um, they've already signed a few liturgy and game of the authors, and they published some works, including Dungeon Configure and Apple 7. Um, however, they're still taking submissions uh, for new and established liturgy game of the authors um, and signing ones uh, who meet uh, certain criteria for uh, threshold for book link, genre, rank, if previously published. Um, and there's a link in the show notes where you can submit your stuff. So there you go. Um, on to stuff that is out now that we haven't had a chance to read. Um, not along this list this week, not a lot not been published. Um, including though this week, uh, seven days later, book number two. Also, Quest for Dominion a Little Bit Saga, Hero Online, book number four. Uh, there are a few more audiobooks that have been released this week, and that includes Fresh Blood, Survival Book Number One. Uh, um, also, the System Apocalypse Short Story Anthology, which I actually enjoyed. Um, curious to see how they worked out the narration for that, uh, but it is available for you to listen to. Um, also, Hero Go Champion is Plain Book Number Three is out for you to listen to, and also Dungeon Core Academy Book Number One out as an audiobook. I actually enjoyed this as an ebook, but it's available for you to listen to as an audiobook now. Um, in upcoming liturgy, this is just a list where I read off a bunch of stuff that's coming in out in the near future. I scroll through Amazon on a weekly basis and scrape together, um, from here in Facebook pages and other, look, uh, other, other information sources, um, a whole long list of stuff that's coming out and put together for you readers and, and writers to, for your benefit to, to schedule your reading and writing stuff. Uh, on April, January 28th, it'll be Viridian Gate Online, The Dark Siege, the seventh book in that series. January the 29th, it'll be Guard, Web of Worlds. Uh, on January the 30th, it'll be The Crafter's Dilemma, the third book in the Dungeon Crafting series. January 31st, it'll be the second book in the Endless Fantasy Online series. January 31st as well, it'll be Ultima, A Little Bit of Journey, Legends Online, and book number four. February the 1st, it'll be Thousand Tales Side Quest. Um, this is a short story collection set in the Thousand Tales universe. On February the 3rd, there's no technical pre-order for this. The author just let us know about it. Send us a uh, cover art. Uh, Infernal Bones, Elemental Dungeon book number two, which is the second book in that series. I did enjoy book number one. Um, on February the 4th as well, it'll be Battlemaster, the Blood Crown book number one. On February the 4th as well, it'll be The Last Time Loop, Max of the Rebellion, volume number two. Uh, February the 4th, you're also going to get a new series from Carrie Summers called Tales of Northblood, A Winter's Breath, A Little Pretty Saga. 
on February the 6th, it'll be the Bad Guys series, book number three, Skull and Thrones. The February the 7th, it'll be Dark Academy Transformation, book number four. February the 10th, it'll be The Equation with One Unknown Invasion, book number two by Vasily Mihenko. On February the 13th, The Art of Deception, World of Card, book number two. On February the 14th, just in time for Valentine's Day, it'll be Pearl of the South, World of the Change, book number two, which is the sequel to his um, very popular first book in that series. So there you go. On February the 14th as well, it'll be The Second Betrayal, The Divine Apostasy, book number two. February the 18th, this is new, new to the list, uh, Axe Storm, Sky Realms Online, book number three. On February 29th, Gods of Ash and Amber, Seeds of Chaos, book number four. February 29th, Path of the Soul, Black Flame Online, book number three. Uh, March the 3rd um, of, of 2020, it'll be Neon Dark, A Little Bit Adventure, by J.D. Astra. This is from um, Shadow Alley Press. Um, March the 9th, it'll be The Incarnator, Project Stellar, book number one. On February 10th, also from Shadow Valley Press, Reading Get Online, Insurrection, The Alchemic Weaponer, book number three. That's the third book in that series. Um, March the 20th, The Dark Continent, Underdog, book number three. March the 30th, Quest for Freedom, Hero Online, book number five. April the 1st, Sentence to Troll, book number three, which is a very apropos release date. On April the 2nd, Eastbound in Town, The Good Guy series, book number eight. April the 15th, Dragonheart, the book five, and May the 1st, War Singer, the fourth book in their Cameo Online Chronicles series. So there we go, folks. A lot of stuff for you to enjoy and read and to schedule and plan out. I know I use this list to plan out my my spinning as a reader and as a, as, as a publisher, as a writer. So there we go. On to the new releases and reviews. And our first review of the week is going to be Dungeon of Strata, written by G. Day Penman. It is 368 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Limited, and here's the author's description. When Martin's Raiding Guild joined the latest virtual reality MMO, they discover a challenge like no other. Strata Online is a 100-floor mega dungeon filled with an ever-shifting ecosystem of monsters. Martin's team soon find themselves in a race against the world's strongest guilds, all competing to be the first to reach the unbeatable game's lowest depths. Stranger still, they must now contend with Sin, a twisted morality meter which can transform a player's class into its dark counterpart. With eternal fame and prizes on the line, Martin risks playing as a rarely chosen race in Morovian Ratman, combined with an unusual exorcist class. But like other games, he will need his much courage as skill to progress because the deeper he goes, the darker Strata gets. There you go. It's actually a pretty good description of what the story is, um, including like the setup of it. Um, this is a very solid VR dungeon crawl story at its core, but there is a thread of like this um, old one type horror um, kind of underpinning to this story, which I, I think will be developed more in future books, but it is something that's kind of started off here. Um, there's really good action for the story, decent RPG progression. There's a lot, actually a lot of crunchy numbers and skills and notifications and character sheets and things like that levels being progressed. Um, but it wasn't really anything I hadn't seen before. So there's nothing like super special. Even the exorcist class is just kind of a combo between almost like a, a, a semi paladin kind of kind of class with like healing abilities and combat. Um, the actual abilities themselves are they're pretty decent. Um, but I guess it's not it's probably not the thing that I enjoyed the most about the story, but it is it's relatively crunchy. Um I think I liked a little bit more again out of the action adventure. The storytelling is really solid. Um there's a nice um even though it's very dungeon crawling and very essentially dungeon dive there's also some nice um underpinnings of the story that have like potential to be like good 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 secondary stories um there's also a really good group hander eventually after the 38 uh, percent mark when like the main character gets um old gil makes to join his group um and it just kind of like picked up the, the dialogue a little bit um even the drudgery in the real life job situation um which I, I generally don't enjoy it, but this one I did just because it was a nice counterpoint to the more exciting game. And it definitely kind of developed the, oh, game, people who really love gaming, who love MMOs, kind of view their jobs as the thing they got to do to pay bills and they, with the real lives are in video games. And so that, that definitely was highlighted here in this particular story. Um, and I, I liked it. I liked the kind of that, 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 um, 
that reflection of that particular aspect of it. Um, I also like the the fact that the main character is not a human and there are no human races or traditional um, races and classes in the story. Um, so kind of add a nice little flair to it as, as, as shown by the cover uh, for me, had a good time with this gets a score of 7.7 7 out of 10. That's a, that's a good score for me. Um, not just good, but it's also really good. So enjoyed it. Next up is going to be Tuscan Blade, Exodus Online, book number one. He's a little bit of a novel written by Lavelle Jackson. It is 351 pages, $3.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. Grab your axe, charge your core, bash some skulls. Logan Sharp's life has been a disaster, but that's finally going to change. As soon as incessant technologies heard about his situation, they knew he would be perfect fit for their new game. Only catch, once he goes in there's no coming back. Without hesitation, he signs the papers and enters the new VR MMORPG world called Exodus Online as a star child. As an extra incentive, Logan is given a chance to become what he's never been before, something unique, something powerful. Abandoning his old name to go with one that suits his new body, Necro is ready to start over. To face this new reality, Necro must learn to survive in a dangerous, unforgiving world. Even with the help of two daring women at his side, how will he fare while exploring deadly dungeons facing power-hungry leaders and leveling this new body? The only certainty is this, Logan is dead, but Necro has risen. Okay, lots of puns there, really good cover art. Um, this is a decent read for me. It's not, it's not a boring read. It, it worked for me in several respects, which made it uh, just entertaining enough to get a, a good score for me. Um, but I don't know that I read second book. Um, it's a decent read again. I think there are aspects of, that I enjoyed. Combat was good. Uh, there is an overpowered main character here, which some people aren't going to like. Um, but for me, it was decent because it was at least justified in the game mechanics and, and in the setup of the story. And the author took the time to kind of track um, the progression of the main character. Um, and even though there are certain issues with that, which I'll get into a little, a little later. I, I, I appreciated that the author took the time to do so. Um, the pacing of the story is going to be definitely a slice of life, which is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I don't mind that kind of story personally, but I know other readers do, which is why I bring it up. Uh, the main character in the story is uploaded to an RPG fantasy world as an orc with some major bonuses, um, which is where the overpowered, overpowered nature of the character comes in. Um, Story-wise, again, he's it's very slice of life. He's mostly just going on from quest to quest to quest to quest. Um, and along the way, you get new characters, you get a little bit of world building, you definitely get some class progression stuff. Um, but it's basically just doing this casual adventuring, um, beating up bullies, fighting monsters for most of the story. There is a thread towards the um, three-fourths mark to the end of the story where he, there's a little bit of a darker side that develops in the novel. Um, villains doing terrible things and getting, of course, their justifiable brutal comeuppance. Um, but it's not a real plot heavy story. So if you're looking for something that has like a plot, this is not going to be it. This is again, very slice of life where the main character again is mostly just going from quest to quest to quest. It is what it is. Um, game mechanic wise, there are quests that are finished, XP's gain, powers and stats, all that increases that those, that information does exist in the story. But I, I don't want to say there's a ton of like real stat progression. And that's mostly because of the way that it's set up as the main character being overpowered. He's offered 20 free stat points. Um, and then as he levels, he's only given one per level. Um, and so relative to his initial character creation, his actual progression is not like huge and impactful in that respect. And like the stat issues, um, he does progression regards to his class, which is where you're going to see most of your RPG progression and unlocking his, uh, chaos butcher stuff and his abilities and skills and, powers and everything there. Um, but there, I, I did appreciate that there, the author did try to justify the overpowered nature of the character within the game mechanics instead of just kind of leaving it really loosely undefined. Um, so that was definitely an improvement from some of the things I've read from the author. Um, one of the issues I kind of have in the story and with, with, with and honestly, <laughs> most of the author's works, um, dialogue. It always seems dialogue is kind of the, the weakness in a lot of the storytelling here. Um, and, and this may be something that's just personal to me, but I, I, it always takes me out of like the immersion of the story when an NPC character in a medieval fantasy world, um, uses modern slang. And it's just one of those weird things for me because it, it just, in my brain, it just doesn't fit when the main character does it, um, in either internal dialogue or speech, 
perfectly cool. It makes sense because that's set up in my brain. He's from our modern world. So he'd be using our modern speech patterns and colloquialisms and phrases. Um, but when these NPC characters who are supposed to be in this medieval fantasy world and who call the main character Starborn instead of a player, um, start using slang or modern speech terms, again, it just kind of just breaks the immersion. I always, always just kind of took me out of like, oh, that sticks up like a sore poor thumb. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just very distracting for me. And it kind of made each one of those characters not have a distinctive voice in a lot of ways. Um, they all kind of sounded like the main character, which is just a thing for me. Um, other readers I, from other reviews have also had issues with a slice like piecing, um, where he's going from quest to quest. Again, that's just a personal taste. Like, and I don't mind personally, but I know other readers do. So I bring up. Um, overall, again, it's a decent read. If you're in the mood for some a story with an overpowered main character, um, a good action, and again, some dark storytelling, but again, very slice of life uh, storytelling. We're just following the main character as he does these quests and gradually learns about the world and kind of again, kind of goes into so a few dark places towards the um, last, you know, arc of the, of the storyline. Uh, for me, it gives a 7.2 out of 10. Um, it is a, it, it was entertaining enough uh, not to get a negative score um, in any shape form. Not to, the best book I've read this week, but again, a decent read if you have the time to read something. Next up is Outpost 7, a game lit, lit RPG dungeon core adventure, book two in the Dark Exchange, written by Troy Neenan. Uh, it is 303 pages, $3.99. It is available on Kindle Limited, and here's the author's description. Help wanted. The Dark Exchange seeks to fulfill multiple positions for a once in a life job opportunity. Farmers, soldiers, gamers, slackers. Put your life experience to work confronting new species and exploiting, er, er, um, exploring. Alien worlds. Four brave applicants heed this call to action and find themselves facing a dungeon so dastardly that they will need every ounce of their combined experience to survive. But dungeon survival isn't the only goal. The new hires must band together to create a base of operations where they can muster the forces to defeat the hordes of enemies that the dungeon will throw against them, a base where they can unlock the mysteries contained within the dungeon's depths. Welcome to Outpost 7. Hostile work environment guaranteed. There you go. Um, this is a fairly decent story. Um, it has issues though. Um, overall I was, I was entertained enough to give it a, a positive score, but again, it has, it has issues. It has, um, it starts as a transported to an RPG ruled story with, where thousands of people find themselves without their memories and they are told they have to survive on these alien world or sent to. Then it transitions to a small group base building story. And then it is something weirder, which I'm not, I'm trying, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. Um, we'll still try. Um, there are definitely some weird story twists here. Um, at, at the expected points of, you know, 33, 50, 75%. Um, and again, they're weird twists, but they were just weird enough. I, I like weird, um, <laughs> where it kept me interested enough to keep reading the story. Um, there are some storytellations I, I found particularly confusing. I think part of the, the issue that some readers have had with the story is that it is written as a kind of a stream of consciousness kind of story where, or, or a pantsing kind of story, which is an author term where the author is just kind of writing and, and figuring out the story as he's writing it. And so sometimes it doesn't feel like there's any kind of plan for where it's going. And, and that's something that kind of comes through in the story. Um, and again, some of the early decisions I thought were just a little confusing, like shifting main characters, um, shifting perspectives was was a real interesting choice. I mean, I'm not trying to spoil, I'm not going to try to spoil any plot deal, but there was definitely a shift in main characters part of you. Um, and I was like, wow, that's that's pretty ballsy of, of, of a decision there. And if you read it, you'll see what I mean. Um, or adding new characters, a little explanation of why they got here or jumping around with the game stuff was a little confusing. Um, yet, I found the story engaging. I did. Uh, um, they're good fight monsters. Um, but for me, the bigger draw is probably the social conflicts among the survivors who don't know each other or trust each other, yet they have to work together and decide how they're going to advance their base um, if they're going to survive this whole situation. And that expands in several for several layers as the story continues. Um, I like the good group banter. There is a kind of dark humor in the story that I that I that I appreciated. Um and the, the just like again, weird story twist that kept me interested enough to keep going. Other readers weren't as uh, appreciative of it, 
which is fine. Everyone has different points of view, but for me, it was enough. Um, on the game mechanics side of things, this is where there are issues. Um, game mechanics exist, um, but it's pretty light overall. Part of the story is uh, part of the story title is a game lit liturgy dungeon core adventure, and there's definitely an adventure here. Um, there is technically a dungeon core, but it's not really a dungeon core story. Um, and there's game lit stuff, but it's not really a lot of RPG elements here. Um, there is a definitely base building on mechanics. That's kind of that. I, I, I think to me a, a better description for this would be a base building dungeon crawl story. That would be, that would be perfectly fine as as a better description. Um, there are very few RPG aspects though. Um, there are a couple times where like levels and buildings are leveled up, um, but aside from those few mentions, there's no real RPG progression for the characters in the story. Um, the characters themselves complete quests, rewarded cash or special decoins that are being used for uh, to decrease building times, um, instant level items, or a variety of other kind kind of issues like that, like research increases. Um, and there are other game aspects like uh, researching collected alien loot and items, lootable monsters, but there's nothing like XP for killing monsters or character levels in that respect. Um, there's also not really a dungeon core story. Here. And I, what I mean by dungeon core story is that in traditional when you use the term dungeon core, you are either telling the person sort of from the perspective of an actual dungeon who's creating traps and monsters and layers and having metric summon types, but the story is definitely told from his perspective or the people who are building that dungeon. Um, in this respect, the only use of a dungeon uh, core is really that a dungeon core powers the base building, but it's not sentient. Um, I'm, I'm again, I'm trying to spoil things. And there is a secondary core. There's kind of a dungeon dive aspect to it. But again, there's no real dungeon core um like perspective here. So I wouldn't really call it a dungeon core novel as much as a core exists that powers all the building here. Um, overall though, the story was kind of a mixed bag for me. Um, the game stuff wasn't really deep enough or consistent enough to keep me interested, but um, the other parts of the story were just enough to keep me turning pages. And that includes the social conflicts, the combat, and again, the weird story twist. Overall, I liked it, but not because of the game elements. Um, those were just part of the slice of life storytelling for me. Uh, overall, it gets a score of 7.3 out of 10. That's Outpost 7, a game lit to lit RPG Dungeon Core Adventure, book number two, um, with a score of 7.3 out of 10. And next up is going to be Ian's Picks of the Week. Uh, this is a new segment of the podcast where contributor Ian Mitchell, who's read nearly as many lit RPG stories as me, um, just kind of submits some reviews for the week. And I, I, I like taking them like reading them because um, these are things I'm not reading at the point. And so we get a broader perspective and more reviews for, for readers and watchers um, and listeners to, to appreciate. Um, and this week he is reviewing three new novels or three novels, including Civ CEO two, a four um, X lit story, a lit series, the accidental champion. It's such a long title. <laughs> it's written by Andrew Karvik. Um, Ian's review to this one is Diplomacy. It was smart, a story that had a CEO running all over the place, making deals and managing his own village. A lot of negotiations, fairly easy reading, and, well, a bit dull. I like the care and craftsmanship in the construction of this edition. No boom, though. And he gives it a score of 7.5 out of 10. So there you go. He actually says a little bit dull inside. He still gives a score of 7.5 out of 10. Again, um, just giving, uh, as a frame of reference, mean... Me and I have reviewed similar novel, the same novel sometimes, and his his review score is generally about a point higher than mine for the same kind of viewpoint. Um, so just keep that in mind, and if you're trying to compare review scores, uh, but I'm, I'm always going to post it. Jack, just like he says, he had a good time with it. It was good enough to to read and, and give it a positive review. Uh, so there you go. Um, he also reviewed Villainous Life, a little bit of super villain novel written by Tom Warren. This review is actually one of the longer ones he's given us. Um, and I should probably pull it up for you. There you go. <laughs> he says, slow start, satisfying ending. The beginning felt clunky. Not enough bam pow. And I didn't have as much fun with the beginning. Good, but not great. I'd give the four um, the four chapters four stars. Super zone is much fun by themselves. In chapter five, 30% in, Miranda is working with Grind, a coffee-powered villain group, she blossoms when she starts interacting with Gadex, a gadget-based villain. I like the story more and more as it progressed and interacted with her team. By the end, her villain group had some solid characters that I cared about. The writing feels a bit like a group of people playing a tabletop RPG, 
My personal preferences are stories that have more first person feel instead of watching from above the table. I used to play superhero games and the book definitely reminds me of them. The action improved as things went on. Levels actually mattered as well as the level of choices, perhaps a few too many uh, full character sheets for my taste. I enjoyed the story and was pleased with the finished book with well-executed endings get bonuses for me. I really like to see where this goes from here and he gives it a score of 8 out of 10. Um, this is one of the few book, well, I say few. <laughs> this is one of the books where I and actually, I and actually uh, diverge in our review scores. I actually gave this novel a Reddit uh, originally when it first came out. I give it a five out of ten because I thought it was boring. Uh, both the actual storytelling and also especially the game mechanics. Um, so I, 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 it just wasn't a good fit for me. Uh, but Ian does um, tell you why he appreciated it more and where it, it started working better for him. So definitely um, go check it out if you feel. Um, if you lean more towards this review score, so that's fine. Uh, but again, perfectly okay that we have diverging viewpoints. Again, it's one of the things I like about um, getting contributors that we get a broader range of, of readers with sometimes uh, uh, different viewpoints and review scores. And that's totally web. Um, also, from I this week is going to be there you go, uh, Dungeon Calamity, The Divine Dungeon, book number three, written by Dakota Kraut. Um, he says, even better. The third time I've read and listened to the Dungeon Warren series multiple times. Such a great mix of dungeon core, um, cultivation, liturgy, and other genres. Cal, Danny, Dale, and his party are all strong characters. Book three continues the adventure and has, has the reveal we'd been expecting. Strong writing and sm on the smaller world, the mountain, make a great environment for adventure. I really like all of Cal's interesting advances. The whole series is worth the acclaim as one of the strongest in the genre, and it gives it a score of 8.8 .8 out of 10, um, which I absolutely 100% agree with. This is uh, the Divine Dungeon series, one of the best um, liturgy series in, in the genre. Um, and it's a finished series, so that's always a positive. Um, and, and, it deserves a great review square. Um, so there you go. And that's uh, that's all of Ayn's reviews for this week. And that is it for the week, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening, for watching, for hanging out with me. Um, there are plenty of links in the show notes. If you want to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, our website, feel free. So it's a great place to, to find out our latest reviews of the week, uh, watch the podcast on a regular basis or listen to it. You can download it. We're also on iTunes, um, um, Google Play, and every other place you can find an actual podcast to listen to on your phone and and and, and automatically download us. Uh, so we're in your phones. You can hear us every single week, folks. Um, we also have links for a number of other Little Bit Facebook groups um, where you can interact with your little, favorite Little Bit authors and other readers and, and find out recommendations and, and just see what's going on in our little <laughs> subgenre of a world. Um, but of course, if you want to help support the podcast and help keep us free and ad free, count all the ways you do so at littlebitypodcast.com slash support. But the easiest way is just when you buy your books, um, click on the links uh, that we have in our notes. We'll get a little, uh, like a few pennies per book that you read or that you purchase uh, from Amazon uh, helps cover the cost of the podcast. So there we go. Uh, but again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. Uh, and until we can hang out again, remember to go read some little RPG. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>